Many of us work hard to own our own flats. This woman digs deep into her pocket to buy flats for others. And some of us feel uncomfortable when accosted by the less fortunate. This woman seeks them out to befriend them. Well, defying the norm is very much the story of Teresa Sue. At 45, she made a career switch to take up nursing. And at 65, when most people are either retiring or have already retired, she set up one of the first aged homes for the sick. Today, at the age of 95, she looks after elderly women younger than she is. What keeps her going? This old lady here, she's 82, and I'm 95. And as long as I can help, I will help them. Well, at the moment, we care for nine families and about 21 old people in the single rented rooms. I started doing this. Now it's about 62 years. It was 1945. When I came through Shanghai, a few British friends whom I work with invited me to a meal. Oh, it's so nice talking to you. Yes. We went to quite a posh hotel in Shanghai. There was all cut glass laid out on the table and there was champagne with coffee and whatnot. I'm so sorry I have to leave now. Well, that's it. All the best to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. When I left the place, just outside the gate, I saw a man, all yellow and thin and star skinny. He was barely able to hold himself up. He leaned against the wall and asked for a few things. So I thought, now if all men are created by the same being, this means my brother. And what was I doing inside that, eating that uh, huge meal and all the splendor, and this my brother is starving. So I went home, threw out everything, all my lipstick and my roots and my nail polish, everything went. And I thought, I'll never touch a scent that belongs to a poor person. That was the starting point. And after that, I was free. I don't want any clutter that is uh, not necessary. People come to sit here and talk with me, I need chairs. But this is essential. I didn't touch a thing that I didn't really basically need. And everything else must go, go to those who need it. Two for Chinsuya. Two for block two. So you take two. Yeah, yeah. into one block, huh? There's two of this monkey together. Yeah, Where's yeah, the yeah. other one? Oh, yeah, she's 95 and she's taking, uh, looking after those who are younger than her. Uh, can the other wait and help look because he's got some rice and sugar and things yeah, to yeah. Right, right. go all out, like carrying rice. It's so heavy, yeah? And yet she go and carry it. She doesn't care for herself. She only care for people. This inspired me to follow her again. I九十三年开始种一种腰子病，然后呢，出边洗啊，每个头有每个头二千几蚊啊，我大佬帮我申报纸咯，我先认识到个许美师啊。I may have been about five or six so when I heard beggars telling their sad tales along the street I felt an instant reaction of compassion I was too small to look out the window but I wanted to see why are people suffering like this why the question was why 
and and the feeling also was that those who suffer must be helped. Wherever I went, I would look up poor people. A friend came to me and showed me the paper of the write-up of this, this very sad case. So I went to visit the family. I found out that it was really very desperate. So we started helping them. Then every month we pay for the dialysis treatment. Then we pay for the monthly checkup at clinics and for the medicine. As time goes on, people know about my work and friends or friends' friends know about my work. They bring the cases to me and I would still go and investigate. Then if I get sometimes cheated, of course. When I get to know, I write them a letter to say I discovered that this was not right. So don't do it again. If you really need help, I will still help you. But don't cheat, don't cheat me, don't cheat anybody because respect for yourself. Then you do yourself more wrong. I lose money, but you lose your own character. saw so much suffering. I saw all these bodies, I saw the wounded people and I couldn't help them because I hadn't escaped. Poor people, at worst they can go back in, but if they're sick and crippled and disabled, unless you go to them, they will die. At the time, I was 45 years old. I wrote to the nursing council in London. I said, I'm grossly over age, but for me, it's a dedication not a livelihood. And the matron wrote to say, I'm well, so touched by your letter, please come, we'll train you. So I went. I came back to Singapore in 1961. But in 1965, my sister bought me this land in Jalan Payaloi. I set up the home, now known as home for the aged sick. <laughs> home that took in sick and bedridden patients. This was one of the early wards and uh, two here I put three patients there and uh, along here before the shelves were up I placed three patients here. This was our first block. Now when the hundred beds were filled up we started building the second block, double story, to take in more patients. This used to be my fun garden. One of us very kind to give up uh, the property, a uh, luxury bungalow house, to cater for the home, to house uh, aged sick people. I believe she's a remarkable person. Matron Su was totally involved in the day-to-day -day running of the home. She looks after the home with, uh, without receiving any pay or salary, you, which you may call it. My sister supported me, the one who bought this land for me. She, she, she passed away. She gave me quite a sum of money with which I was able to buy uh, flats, five flats in Singapore two units in Malaysia. People were asked to move. They had no money, so I, I bought the flats for them. Without her, this flat may not be here, because uh, she insisted on us buying a flat, at least a four-room, 
I first got to know her when I was 12, uh, when my mother went to work in the home for the aged sick. Yes, I am a cooker. I am a cheap cooker. I am a sample of my own. I am a rumble salad. I am a little bit of 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 a little bit She's a key person to consult in terms of uh, decisions and uh, she's one of the first to know when something happens, like uh, a wedding has been booked or a kid born. My meditation teacher told me, you are born to serve. For as long as anyone in this world that needs your help, you are never off duty. This he told me. I said yes. I realized that. I never think of my work as sacrifice or charity. What I have, I give. What I don't have, I can't give. I didn't waste time on frustrations. One time I saw a door ajar, so, and I peeped in and it was quite dark and I went in to see was anybody there who wanted my help. She said, yeah, I'm very thirsty, I'm very hungry, I haven't eaten for three days, I couldn't get up. So I made her a drink and I support her to sit up and she held the ball and she went gum gum like this and finished the whole lot. Her hair was so brittle and dry and her hands were so, you know, feverish. I said, how old are you? She said, I'm 105. So we called Andrew, and she was alone. So first thing in the morning, I went to the nurse, I said, who was, where is the patient who came in half past 10 last night? And she said, uh, uh, I said, this is the name, Ling Yun Hyang. So they looked, on the desk there was a folder, Ling Yun Hyang passed away two o'clock in the morning. So at least, I had a chance to hold her hand for, for an hour or two, sitting with her. Her last talk to me was that she was happy somebody was holding her hand. So that was my last gift to her and her last gift to me. I must have got it from my mother because she was totally dedicated to the job she chose to do, that is a family. I think that is the trait that she passed on to us. We have no family of our own, therefore we look after everybody else. She has been a guiding soul and she's been the light to our family. She will always be. What was the young girl who asked me? What is your philosophy? I said, the whole world is my home. All living beings are my family. Selfless service is my religion. Extraordinary People salutes Teresa Sue, who's dedicated a life to serving others.